to do what you do, you have to think like whoever the enemy and the, the opposition is. Meaning, if I'm going to go out there and uh, uh, go against the dirty, manipulative, deceptive tactics that are out there, I almost have to match them, don't I? Because, you know, a lot of times you'll talk from, uh, uh, you'll sit down and have conversations with the left or the right, and the, the, the right will say, the left is just extremely manipulative in what they do, and they're willing to go and play such dirty tricks, and look what they did in Chicago with JFK and Dewey, and they'll, they'll get the votes, they'll get this, they'll get that. And then uh, some people say, well, we have to play their games against them to beat them, right? Yep. And then uh, you'll have uh, faith-based folks will say, we're just not going to cross the line. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to stick to it. But I think there's a part of it where, you know, the whole saying goes, if you want to wrestle, if you wrestle with a pig, you know, you, you kind of get some mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point is, if you're going to wrestle with a pig, you got to you have to have some kind of pig tendencies. You have to play their games against them. Did you ever in your mind say, look, you guys all want to play square and you want to play safe. I'm going to go against these guys and I'm going to use their strategies against them. I'm going to piss them off. Was that kind of. Uh, a line you had to be willing to cross, or this is the line you're going to come as close to the line as possible, but not cross it. I don't know if you understand the question I'm asking. No, I understand. Yeah. I understand. So, uh, there, what are your thoughts on that? Well, there, there was a professor in, in college named David Knowlton, and he introduced me to a man named Saul Linsky. And and David Knowlton was I don't know if he was a professor or an adjunct guy, but he was a, a, a businessman lobbyist who taught a class, and I took and. And he, and he, and he, this Rules for Radicals by Saul Linsky, I don't know if you've heard of this book. Sure, of There's a line in this book which is called Rule Number Four, make them live up to their own book of rules. Now that sounds sort of Machiavellian and, and twisted, but it's just a simple, it's really, another way of saying it is expose their hypocrisy. So, and Linsky says it, I think he said in this Rules for Radicals book, you know, he was talking about Christians and it, it's hard for them to live up to their own standards. It's hard for them to live up to the Bible, for example, but you can apply that to anything. And I read that line in that book, Rules for Radicals, um, which is now transformed into something just sort of journalistic. But at the time, there was on campus, they had these uh, speech codes, they call them. You can't offend anyone for any reason. You know, you can't, you can't say, anyone that, say anything that offends anybody. And for me, that was a slippery slope. It, it, I just viewed it as twisted. I said, you can't offend anybody. Well, the whole idea of college is to, is to exchange ideas. So that's what led to the Lucky Charms thing, where I said, okay, well, if I can't offend anybody, well, then why don't I say this box of Lucky Charms is racist against my Irish heritage? And, I, and, I, and it was, I was like a, a form of satire, I guess, or, or you know, exposing it. But now what, what's, what this is evolved in is, and I want to draw a boundary, is that absolutely not do we do what they do. Uh, we do not lie to, our, to the people. We do not deceive the audience. We do not do the things that they do. We do sometimes use deception in the sense of a pretext with our subject. In other words, in journalism, circumstances can arise in which deceit towards the subject is less wrong than other possible courses of action, including being so honest with your subject such that you are dishonest with your audience. In other words, if I come to you, let's say you work for the Pentagon and I say, hi, I'm a journalist. Tell me all the fraud you're committing. <laughs> and you give me some canned line. And then I publish your line to the millions. Well, now I'm lying to millions of people. But if I pretend to be a telephone repairman and I'm in your office and we're talking and I record you, right, and you don't know it, well, I've just lied to you about who I am. But in doing so, I've gotten some truth, which I broadcast to the people. And they'll attack me. Oh, Keith's a liar. He uses deception and undercover. I say it's a question of relative deception. And, and, and in this business, in journalism, you have a choice to make. So I, it wasn't so much that I was obsessed with undercover and wanting to do this, these things that seemed manipulative. I, we wanted to do whatever we needed to do to get to the truth. We had to dig deep. We had to learn how to use disguise and pretense and these things that were not comfortable. These are not comfortable things to do. You don't like doing them. In fact, I could tell you in that, in that Lucky Charms video, uh, my heart was beating 160 beats per minute. I, it didn't. I didn't. You know, wasn't comfortable uh, performing in this way to get to get this information. Did, did it feel? Did it make you feel like uh, I feel like I'm being a little bit deceptive and dirty? Or no? You're kind of like, listen, I'm gonna match you. I'm gonna match you at this. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna do this. But I'm gonna play all the games necessary to get as close to the line as possible. No, it it felt 
uncomfortable. It felt uncomfortable, but ne- the best I can say is it felt uncomfortable, but necessary. I remember confronting the professors. I had a, printed out these certificates and, you know, it was, it, this is all irony and satire. Like, think of it like Borat meets 60 Minutes. That's the best way I can describe it. It was like Borat. Okay, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to pretend to be this so I can expose the reaction and mm-hmm. expose yeah. the, 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 the speech policies. I felt so uncomfortable. I forced myself to do it. I forced myself to do it. It, it, it. It's like, you know, doing something you hate doing, frankly. Like I had to stick my little child arm down a sewage pipe. I, I, I just <laughs> forced myself to do it because I said, this must happen. I must do this. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.